Hello there. Now, I know it's been a few days since my birthday, but I've actually built all of the Lego, well, nearly all of the Lego that I'm getting. I've been told there is another gift on the way, so definitely stay tuned to the end of the video to find out what this mystery surprise is. But this video is just going to be all the Lego, not only sets, but also minifigures and parts from sets that I've really wanted. And there's also a really cool new Lego toy that I've been given to basically help me sort Lego so much quicker. I wish I had this from the start, but I'll be giving it a test live on camera to find out just how good it actually is. So I think we should waste no time and get to the video. I will say beforehand, there is going to be the present that I got early that I'm not going to spoil for you. The video is already up and I will leave it on the end card of this video if you haven't already seen it. That's from Tuesday's video, I do believe. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. But you don't need to watch that first. Sit back, enjoy the video, and then go watch it after if you haven't already. But either way, I hope you enjoy the video. And as you can see, there's actually quite a bit that I got Lego-wise. We have two sets at the back, two minifigures that have been on my want list. This contraption, we will get to that in a minute because I haven't actually tested this yet. I've just pulled a bunch of bricks on, and if you know sort of what it looks like you might know how it works but i think it's going to be really interesting and i will quickly shout out my fiance because she also created this it's sort of a puzzle card because what we have here is a birthday cake which if you recognize the set number first off very well done because i don't remember any star wars set numbers let alone any of the special ones but it's actually the set number for this lego set you can see on screen the birthday cake, which is a decent looking set. I know I complained in my recent video. I think it was the one that came out actually on my birthday where I created a mock for one of the recent poly bags, which I think did turn out pretty cool if I say so myself. But this set doesn't actually come with a cardboard box. It is an actual set, which first off is lovely from Lego. And there's also a sled with it. I'm not quite sure. I think the cake turns into a slide if you have it on its side. But anyway, back to this one. The layers of the cake actually move up and down so you can piece them together. And if I can just try to spread them out a bit, you can see that each of them have their own brick layers. It's really cool and again is meant to represent the same decorations that are on the cake. You've even got the candle pieces at the top with the little flames. So that is really cool. I'm going to move this because I'm scared that I'm going to break it and something's going to start falling off. So I'm going to put this to the side and we can take a look at all the other pieces. Because as I said, there's a few sets, there's a few things I've been wanting. And I think the first thing that I will tackle are the figures that I was excited for because there's something really cool about this one. First off, we've got this little bonus sweet bags. These were purchased off the minifigure store. You can see just there, rarebricks.uk, takes you to the minifigure store. I haven't ordered anything for them, but I did have a quick check. And if you are a fan of the minifigures for Star Wars specifically, or any of the magazine ones, and don't live in Europe or the UK, they do deliver the poly bags worldwide. And they're about five odd pound, which is what we're paying over here for the magazine. So if you want any magazine gifts and you're not in the UK, definitely give them a check because they're quite decent prices. I mean, there's nothing too cheap, but they're all quite relatively the same. So like the collectible minifigures, a lot of them were five, six pound, and that might be a bit expensive for a few of the less popular ones, but also some of the popular ones were the same price. Again, I don't know if that's the case with all of them. Definitely give them a look, but I'm assuming that's where these two sets come from. Now, first off, we do have the Green Goblin and the Glider from the Venomized, the new set, the one with Spider-Man's car, which honestly, I think is a bit useless, Spider-Man having his car. But this is a minifigure that I've wanted for, well, not too much, but really since I saw it, I did pick up the cheaper set, which come with a Venomized Doc Ock. And I think at some point a few years ago, there was a Venomized, I'm not sure if it was a Venomized Iron Man or something like that, which I didn't pick up. I chose the other Marvel one at the time. I'm not really fussed on that, but I'm happy that I've got the Venomized Green Goblin. And you might wonder why it's still in the bag. And that's because I actually built this set in the bag. As you can see, it's a bit wide. I'm 
don't think I'm getting it out of this bag in the one piece. So I will take it out in a minute and take a closer look, but I'm very happy that I managed to build this in the bag. There's also a sticker on the back that tells you instructions can be downloaded off Brick Owl, which is something I didn't know when I made my Brick Owl versus Bricklink video. So if you are looking for set instructions and perhaps you can't get your way around Lego, because unless you know the set name or number, I guess, it's quite hard to find it on Lego, you can search for it on Brick Owl. I've said before, their search system is much, much easier if you don't know what you're looking for. Of course, if you know what you're looking for, definitely go over to lego.com. But if not, have a little search on Brick Out. You can find the instructions and it takes you to the downloaded instructions from the Lego site. They're the official instructions. It's a really cool set. But I also got the final X-Men minifigure from the CMF that I have been missing. I think we got Storm around Christmas. We got Wolverine. Well, we got a handful of Wolverines. I'm pretty sure Wolverine was one of the first minifigures we got. But I finally have Beast, and as you can see, he too is in the bag. I'm not going to lie and say I built this in the bag. I didn't, because as he's got this card behind him, it would have made it nearly impossible. But I thought it'd be fun to just show him off in the bag. I will open them in a second. But first, I think we can take a look at the two sets here, which I got gifted. As you can see, we have the first official Mario, well, unofficial Mario official card sets here which if you didn't know, I have built I have built a few Mario Karts previously. In fact, I might as well get them side by side to show them off because mine aren't too dissimilar to the official Lego ones you can see. Here are the spare pieces for the cart set. And as you can see, they do use the roller skates, I think they are, as a miniature car for the top of the trophy over here in this minifigure's hands. And that's really cool because not only do you get that trophy and can definitely make a bigger one with the spare piece, but you also have two roller skates. So if you wanted someone to be roller skating alongside with them, you've actually got two of these gold skates to you. So that is pretty cool. And I think they're not too dissimilar. You can see the front of the carts is the same. I mean, I've used a little slope perhaps, but that bumper is just a given for go-karts. And they've actually included that also on the back where I've gone for more space for my engine, but they've actually made it six bricks wide compared to my four. And I think that's the right thing to do. I think next time I build any sort of Mario Kart, especially when the official sets come out next year, I'm definitely gonna increase the width of my carts by at least that. I'm not sure it's quite a full, I mean, it's a full brick out to here, but just by that extra plate or so, that definitely looks more like a official go-kart and less like a very thin Mario Kart mock that I made. So you can check out the videos. There are a few videos on these Mario Karts. Search Mario Kart on my channel and they will pop up. But it's not the only set that I got for my birthday as I also got this battle pack, which honestly, if you're not a fan of Ninjago, perhaps this doesn't look as good and I'm not a huge fan of Ninjago, but not only do I love the minifigures, but also you get a little mech in a battle pack. I'd have loved for this to happen with Star Wars. In fact, I've just scheduled a video in a few days time. Give me about a week to work on it. And I'll definitely have transformed the current three Star Wars mechs into this sort of battle pack where you get a smaller mech. You're getting the three figures with it as well. People were army building the Stormtrooper mech for the new Stormtrooper minifigure. Imagine if we got at least two, maybe even four, but probably two Stormtroopers, two Rebels, and a Stormtrooper mech to go along with that Tantive hallway. So many people would be picking it up. It'd be great to get this in Star Wars, and I think they can do. Obviously, this is representing some sort of Ninjago figure, but I think they can take the liberty with Star Wars. We're seeing quite a few LEGO Star Wars sets, like the recent Battle Pack that comes with the Bark Speeder, Based off Lego's early design of a bark speeder before we got the design we love from Clone Wars and Revenge of the Sith. So Lego can definitely give us a battle pack for Star Wars that doesn't necessarily line up to canon. And I did say we'll open these bags, so perhaps I'll get these open right away. For this Venomized Green Goblin glider, I like it a lot more than a recent one we've got from a magazine, which is where I actually picked up the Green Goblin for the first time. And it looks like... It's the same design of minifigure. We've got a few different variations of Green Goblin, so it's nice to get a similar one 
for this Venomized minifigure and Beast is pretty cool as well. He not only comes with this little bit of tech down here, I can't remember what they're called, but it's some equipment from his lab and that nice X-Men belt, but also comes with a yellow mug with the X-Men printing on it. Yellow mugs are so typical for Lego and to get the X-Men mug is really, really cool. Once again, they did send along at least some of the spare pieces. We've got the spare pieces for the Beast minifigure. That was with the card from the box that he came out of. And we also have some spare stud shooters with Venom. So if you did want to order from the Mini Vega store, again, rarebricks.uk, this isn't affiliated, this isn't any sort of paid advertisement. You can just see in front of you that they don't skimp on the spare pieces and they're great quality minifigures. I mean, they're basically new, taken straight from box. Once again, round the world shipping. I think it's a great store to take a look at. And whilst we're on minifigures, there are four minifigures with this. You get the two ninjas. I think it's Jay and Lloyd, if I'm not mistaken. But I really like this wolf because not only is it a really cool figure, and if my camera can focus, perhaps I'll be able to show it off a bit better on the desk. But you can see that you've got this wolf mask on front. And if I flip it, it's actually tied up to, I don't know if that's a blue hood or what it's representing, but it reminds me of the Lego Chima figures with the wolf mask. And I think Ninjago are sort of tying themselves up to the legends of Chima. So it does make sense that they're going with more of an animal mask. But on the back, it's tied up around the head, much like the young blue Mandalorian from Mando. You can see in certain shots, his mask is actually tied to the back of the head. And there is a whole samurai tradition behind it. It's not just something they've done for the actors of the show. So it'd be nice to get a Mando helmet that's half Mando, half tied up at the back. But again, it's not something I think Lego will do, seeing they've not done many season three Mandalorian sets. So I'm not expecting to get a lot, but it'll be really, really cool. Now, I think it's time to take a look at this massive contract. Well, it's massive compared to everything else on my desk. In fact, let's take a further step back because what you'll be able to see is my mat has shrunk. Well, my mat actually hasn't shrunk, but my desk has grown. And that is because I switched up from an 80 centimeter by 40 centimeter desk, I'm pretty sure that is, to a 100 centimeter or meter by 60 centimeter desk. Now you saw in the title, when we hit 1K subs, I will be buying a new desk and it will actually be a standing desk just so there's a bit more energy into the videos. And the reason I'm waiting to 1K is because there was a desk I had my eye on. In fact, it was this desk on screen and it was on sale. It was like 25% off. And then as soon as my birthday hit, I double checked it the night before. And in the morning of my birthday, the sale had ended. So I thought there's no point rushing into it. I'm gonna use this desk for now just to see how I feel about the extra space because on top of the desk itself, I do actually have this pullout for my keyboard and mouse, which then extends the desk to 80 centimeters. And that is why I'm sticking to 60 centimeters because 80 is just a lot, especially when then if I get an 80 centimeter desk, this is gonna stick out to a meter. And I could always just whack them on top, but when I'm recording Lego videos, I like to have a clear desk space, which I will majoritively have, but also this is only a meter. The desk I'm looking at is actually 120 centimeters wide. And that is because I'd also like to raise my PC, have it on the side, and I've solved more or less the dust problem for Lego, but where my computer is down on the floor just by the door, it still collects a lot of dust, so that should have it out of the way and hopefully eradicate the dust problem in this room because if the PC is picking up dust, that's just gonna be put back into the air and eventually end up on the Lego. But let's get the phone hooked up and take a look at the final present. Now, I know I did just say that that is the final present. Of course, we've still got the one that is on the way. So hopefully that does arrive soon and I'll be able to add it on at the end of the video. But it isn't actually the final present. Well. It will be after I show you the next one, but I actually did get two new Lego tops as well. So you can see I am wearing one of them and it's the evolution of the minifigure. It goes from brick to legs to torso to head and then starts walking away just at the end. But this is one of two Lego tops that I got. 
The second one you'll have to wait around for tomorrow's video for. So if you are enjoying the content here on the channel, be sure to drop a like and be sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on any more awesome LEGO content. And of course, you don't want to miss tomorrow's top because like today's one, it is another cool LEGO top. But now let's get back to this box sorter thingy. So hopefully I have given you a good angle to just see how this works, of course. We've got some different size holes that we can take a look at in a minute. And the aim is that the bricks will go through their sized hole and it will sort of separate it based on size. We do have some letters on the side, which you can just about see. We've got large, medium, small, and there's also a B, which come to think of it could represent base. But I always like to think that that is the bum of the machine and Hopefully that's where all the little bricks go. So to power this machine, all we got to do is give it a little jiggle, shake it up, and hopefully the magic does the rest. So once again, I'll probably turn this down if this is too noisy, but... As you can see, there's a few bigger plates that are trying to escape through the holes, but once we lift up the top layer, you can already see the size of the holes in the actual frame. So there's about 25 holes exactly, no need to approximate, that are, I would say, probably about four studs wide, probably even just over four studs wide. So they allow four studs to go through, which does make sense because there are a ton of these one by four bricks that have made it to the next level. Again, there are a few bricks that have gone through funkily. Perhaps that's down to me placing the bricks. I'm sure if you just whacked them on top, They'd probably send half of them through like this one by four does slip through, but most of the bigger pieces do stay on top. Of course, you're not going to get an eight by eight through a five by five rounded hole. So that has separated all the large bricks here and you can stack them upside down. So if you wanted to start sorting these smaller bricks, they do stack upside down as well. Let's just give this a little shake, make sure all of the smaller bricks are through, but the holes on this are smaller. I'm not sure if we'll be able to scrape a few. There you go. You can see that there are smaller holes that just about, they're just tighter than a two by two. So some of the two by bricks and plates will seep through this hole, but the most of them I imagine will be caught on top. So these are more of the bricks, larger plates, and you might be able to hear the odd one still falling through. But as I said, they do stack upside down, which is very nice for when you're trying to get to the bottom and even just showing this off. So let's give it one more wiggle just to make sure any, it looks like this layer is going to be for studs and probably cheese slopes should fit through. There we go. So the only thing I will say for this is if you've got an old lot of Lego that is a bit dusty, it's not going to clear the dust for you. But if I'm being honest, the little holes that you can find in some of the bigger machines, they're not going to clear the dust too well. So you're just going to have to, like I've got this one hair here that must have come off me at some point, just remove it. And as long as you're taking the bricks one by one and not pouring them into a larger tub, it's going to do a perfect job. So this is an amazing machine. It's actually blown my mind how it's worked first time, because as you can see, We've got the one by twos, which makes sense. Again, they can fit through vertically. So perhaps this is the perfect brick sorter because you're not going to get a one by two brick slip through that gap. In fact, I doubt many one by two bricks are probably going through the gap before. Nah, they're definitely going through the medium. But this is the leftovers. If you don't have any studs, then this is just going to be your dust and you can whack this away. But it blows my mind how just how this works and how it works so well. Now this is an absolute game changer if you sort your Lego like me and you could probably see roughly behind you, you probably can't see from back there. I can barely see what bricks are there from here. But what you probably know if you've seen any of my videos on my storage units is all my similar style bricks are stored in the same places. So in this tray, we have a lot of snot bricks. We have a lot of slopes. And I guess this is because they're actually from my mountainous region of the city. I have broke it down. You can see there is a gap just down there to one side of the city. I'm reworking it at the minute. I've kept a little bit of it and it does look quite cool so far. But I'm going to have to find something to fill where this was. So most of it is going to be snot bricks and slopes because that's what I used for the mountain range. So 
I know that most of this will go in the bottom three drawers of my draw tower and I can just put this to the side till I do that. I'll be left with a few 1x2, 1x4 plates and they all go right here on my little draw units. I guess they're both draw units technically but at least I know where they're going and once I've got all the slopes and that out of here I can then leave the rest for there. Unlike the smaller level, the bottom level in fact, which is all cheese slopes, studs, one by one plates, you've got the odd clip and the odd other one by one round tile or that. Most of them go on the top row of this, so whenever I've got the unit down next or whenever I want to put these away, which really should be as soon as I can, but I do tend to put this off quite a while, I can then take this tray and whack all the pieces away. We're looking at the next level, now we've got more slopes, we've got the bigger plates which I don't actually keep in my unit, I've got a separate tub somewhere for it, I have no idea where I've put that so I'll definitely be finding that after the video, but they can all go in there, it just makes it so much easier than when I was sorting out of the tubs, out of the bags, and I'm trying to pick out all the little pieces so then I've got the piles of the big pieces, the big pieces are always the worst to put away, I've got so many Different little bags of differently sized wedge plates of the giant wheels that came with the power miners that really I don't have anywhere to put so they're probably just going to stay bagged up in a tub. But this is going to help me so much sorting out all my different mocks. I have a iconic movie pyramid which is now the name that I've dubbed it and actually... In the next city video, I do want to come up with a name for that as well. So don't leave your comments on this video, but start thinking about it and let me know what you think the city should be named in a couple of days when I make my next update on the city. But I'll definitely be breaking that down soon because I do need the parts for my next mocks. I'm going to break it down into the top layer of this, give it a little shimmy and all the parts will just fall to their layer. I can guarantee it will make it so much easier for me. So I'm really excited to do that. Once again, there might be another set to open and review after this video. So make sure you do drop a like if you enjoy the video and subscribe so you don't miss out because May 4th is going to be massive. 25 years of Phantom Menace, 25 years of Lego Star Wars. It's lined up perfectly for this year. So I am really excited for what's to come with LEGO. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, may the bricks be with you. Always. Unless I've got the set whilst I've been editing this. In which case, we'll just cut to that set. So it is now the next day. And I am purposefully covering up my t-shirt. You've still got to wait to find out what my other LEGO t-shirt is. But this box is massive. I have no idea what LEGO sits in here. It's pretty much fill in the set so it's going to be a big one i don't know if it's multiple but i'm going to open it and i guess capture my reaction live on camera as well so it's a massive box and let's see what's inside so i'm not sure how else to open this on camera so i've got it resting on my leg and it's going to be a little loud next to the mic i do apologize but my grand reveal of the box in a few more tabs because we all know Lego like adding tabs to everything. I don't exactly know where the other tabs are. But we are one tab away from the grand reveal. This is not the easiest way I could have done this. Hopefully there's no fragile ornaments or anything in here. And now we've got the box open. Revealing in three, two, one. We're not there yet, but I think I can see the set. So this is from my parents and they had ordered this a while back, but you know how Lego delivery can be. It doesn't always arrive in time. I can reveal to you, this isn't the only thing in the box, but this is the main thing you may whoops so i sort of dropped the box onto my lead that is hooking my camera up to my computer and completely broke it for a second but this is the set i was gonna get may 4th and i am so happy to have it here i didn't know this was coming i genuinely don't really know what to say so i'm not gonna get this built for this video this will be another video give me a week to build it to play around with it and i might end up uploading it sooner but this isn't the only thing in the box as we also got another luggage tag 
I think the one we have at the minute is the banana from when we've been Spain. Permanent pen written on the back. So it's nice to have a new one for the next time we go away. It's the Mandalorian. And it actually looks really nice. It's the same sort of design to the banana, but of course all the extra details, I'm sure. The camera doesn't do it too much justice, but that looks really cool. And I think I know why this is in there, because at the same time, you may know Lego have a flower trellis gift with bundle, and that has upped the price enough to not only get me the Coruscant Guard gunship, but also get the flower trellis which I do really like and the reason behind this isn't so much for the flowers I'm a big fan of the flowers and the trellis design is actually something I want to incorporate still into my Lego City but it's actually very very similar to the design I had for a recent idea submission for my ET one now I'm sure you've probably heard about it before I'm pretty sure I've said about it in a video but I'll leave one image up on screen showing you what that design is and it's sort of a tall trellis like design with the moon and the trees on and then i have thickened the base to enable it to not only hang on a wall but also stand on its own base and that looks like the exact same design to this flower trellis so i'm actually really looking forward to put this together and just test that design perhaps i'll even try and transform this into some sort of other design but that looks really cool but most of all, I'm just really excited to build this gunship. Again, apologies that I couldn't get this out for today's video. This is going to be its own video. And I've actually already got plans to try and turn this into a battle pack. So, of course, the first one will be the Ninjago mech. Stay tuned for that. But I can't wait to open this. This is probably the number one set on my wanted list. Previously in this video, I got Beast, I got the Venomized Green Goblin. They were my most wanted Marvel minifigures for my Marvel display. So I'll probably have to do an update on that. There is an update coming soon. Actually, I think I can tell you this now. I am going to be picking up the Smiths display finally. I know, I know. Hold your applause. You've waited so long for that Smith's display and I've been putting it off, putting it off. Now that I'm looking at buying other things, I think that has to be the first thing on my list. So I will pick up the Smith's display. There'll probably be another dedicated video for that. So this is going to lead me up till May 4th where there's even more Star Wars stuff. I've got a really big project starting and dependent on how good the Smith's display looks, the project might take up a bit more space. So please do drop a like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe so you can see me unbox the Coruscant Guard gunship. I cannot wait. I'm probably going to put this together after this video. So the review should be out in the next few days. Give me about a week or so just to publish all the other content I've got lined up. And then we'll take a deep dive into this and probably at some point even try to figure out how many clones we can fit inside. But I can announce tomorrow's video is another 3D printing one as well. So we've got a lot going on right now. I'm very happy to have not only this, but also the flower trellis. As I said, this is basically as close to an official Lego made version of my set as I will get, because this is so close to the ET one. So I'm gonna pretend that I designed flowers instead of ET while I'm building this set because this is so close to my, what I thought was an original design. Of course, Lego have it planned way, way ahead, even compared to my channel. So I promise this is the last part of the video, but I also wanted to show off for my birthday, me and my fiance painted some bricks and minifigures. And I painted this Oreo looking brick, which I think is a really cool design. You've got sort of a purpley color on top, purpley color on the bottom, and then this white cream around the middle. And my fiance did paint this red and green brick, but she also painted this Admiral Thrawn minifigure from the upcoming Tales of the Empire. And I'm very happy with how my phase one clone trooper turned out. We had lots of fun painting these and especially getting all of the correct details on our minifigures. Thank you so much for watching. Again, drop a like if you did enjoy this video. Subscribe to see the Coruscant card unbox and may the bricks be with you. Always.